Next up, we've got uh, Savo Knot. Hi. Hey, what's going on, Christoph? How are you? Uh, very good. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great day. There's been a lot of work getting this, putting this all together. Uh, this is finally happening, and there's just so much content. Uh, so we're really absolutely. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Here, uh, we'll have a brief kind of informal session on on what we're building at, at Pieces.app, but certainly uh, an excellent talk there from Michael. I was I was tuned in listening and. Uh, yeah, the, the data, the data Mongols, I think, I think he called them, uh, you know, certainly quite different in our world. Um, as I get into it, I'll, I'll kind of talk about our stance on, you know, what goes to the cloud, what goes, uh, what stays local, you know, edge ML versus, versus, um, you know, kind of centralized cloud powered machine learning and things like that. But um, yeah, without further ado, this will be a, a Debbie, uh, a demo heavy session kind of walking okay, through. Cool. Um, developer productivity, developer experience in this era of, of machine learning and AI kind of augmentation of developer processes. Um, and then also what we're doing and, and how we're building uh, this tool at pieces.app, leveraging AI in all different types of components uh, of the product. So looking forward very, very to it. Very much looking forward. Um, okay. Take it away. Awesome. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to start out with a couple of, of first principle premises that we may all face as developers. I certainly face them. And that is the, the note taking process in and of itself. And I would say that uh, this starts to feel extremely exacerbated, um, you know, especially in this era of AI augmented um, processes where you have co-pilots that, for example, help you write you know, two times the amount of code, right? And so, you know, uh, what we're what we're kind of doing at Pieces is we're trying to capture and manage developer chaos in that work in progress journey, right? And so, let me dive into this a little bit more. Um, a couple of years ago, you know, before the advent of all these kind of really powerful machine learning and AI tools uh, that helped me move faster, write more code, and ship product at an accelerated rate, uh, I maybe you know kind of wrote a couple of languages, right? I, I was quite proficient in Java, TypeScript, uh, a little bit of Dart at the time, but didn't really dabble much in in the C plus plus world or the Rust world or anything like that. And uh, you know, so I was I was you know working in those languages. I was working on a subset of projects, and I was working uh, on a subset of of cross functional teams, right, to build product and and ship that out to the world. Um, and now with the the kind of advent of these these tools, tool, tools like GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, Pieces, etc., um, I'm no longer writing only a handful of languages. I can actually expand my domain of of knowledge around these languages very quickly, right? So. Just the other day, and, and I'll show this in my demo, I've got like 50 browser tabs open and I'm trying to figure out how to write like C headers for Unix systems, uh, Swift code for FFI within Mac OS, and then of course C++ on the, on the Windows side. And so all of a sudden I'm working on a lot more uh, projects, right, in a, a larger variety of languages and I'm working on more cross-functional teams. And so what we're experiencing as developers as we become more of a Swiss army knife um, is that we are, we are ballooning in volume and, and velocity of, of context and material that we're working on, right? And so, you know, if you could think about like just from a documentation standpoint, right? Documentation sets for a couple of languages and frameworks, that's one thing. But if you're able to work on a variety of languages and a variety of frameworks, you're going to have a whole lot more browser tabs open and, and you're going to be interacting with a much larger volume of developer materials. And so this kind of begins to push the limits of what developers are able to kind of capture in short-term memory, but also retain in long-term memory. And that's where we're starting to see like this deep uh, kind of lean on tools that help us capture and save the important components of our workflow, right? As we go from the browser where maybe we're researching and problem solving to the IDE where we're writing code, refactoring and, and shipping product, and then to the collaborative spaces like Teams, Gchat or Slack, where you're interacting with those cross-functional teams and you're kind of discussing, you know, architectures, solutions, pull requests, et cetera. And so uh, we 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 kind of you know summed this up as I said earlier to nothing short of chaos, right? It certainly feels chaotic. And so our goal with the product that I'm about to show you, and this is a this is our startup, so um, it'll be a, a more technical uh, demo, but certainly you know product centric. Our goal is to capture and triangulate what is important throughout that work in progress journey across those pillars that I mentioned, the browser, the IDE, and those collaborative spaces, to capture that proactively for you. Um, as kind of an evolution of the product. And the product started out in phase one as a great place for you to simply fire and forget small components and elements 
uh, across your, your workflow, right? So code snippets, links, screenshots, text notes, things like that, right? Kind of that, that messy, uh, you know, stuff that doesn't necessarily get captured when you commit code and, and pull request it and merge it into main, right? That, that work in progress that is unfortunately lost for, for many of us. Um, and so I'll go ahead and just share my screen here and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the machine learning elements that are both on device and also powered by large language models in the cloud um, to, uh, to, to make this experience really world-class. So let me go ahead and share. Um, let me see here. Uh, content link. This is classic. Insert the URL. Nope, don't need that. I just would like to share my entire screen. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, excellent. Nice. So, um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just quickly jump over here um, and I'll give you a, a quick snapshot of my browser from earlier this week. And as you can imagine, it's just a ton of different browser tabs. Unfortunately, this week I was implementing native name locks across Mac OS, Linux and Windows. Um, and so that's calling uh, mutexes and semaphores across those platforms, right? In Unix, uh, in POISIX systems, and then of course in Win32 or Windows Foundation systems, Windows Runtime. And so that research process and that implementation process obviously generated a ton of different documentation across Dart documentation, Windows documentation, et cetera. And so I'm going through this process and I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, what do I actually need to implement? How do I transform the types from you know, uh, C++ code to Dart FFI bindings and so on. And so, uh, as you can imagine, you know, we, we have here pieces that we're building, which is a great place to just simply fire and forget kind of small iterations, micro iterations, or kind of huge uh, snapshots from your code base or from the, the browser and so on. And so uh, about two and a half years ago, when we started a long journey, we wanted it to make uh, we wanted it to be a, a great place for for people to save, right? And now we're I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but now of course we're we're building a system for AI to save for you to capture the important things. Um, but first and foremost, kind of getting into it, you you might pop over to an implementation and you might be looking at, for example, um, I'll pull this up. You might be looking at some Windows bindings from an open source project, right? And you're not necessarily going to use this, but the, the kind of fundamental here of, all right, this is some interesting code. I want to save this for later, perhaps some inspiration. Oftentimes that starts with a copy and paste, right? So this is kind of what we set out to reinvent, you know, two and a half years ago. And I'll bring us up to speed to where, where we're at and where we're going. But if you, if you use this today in your traditional kind of note-taking process, maybe you go ahead, you open up your favorite notes app like Notion or Apple Notes or whatever, Google Keep, and you paste something. Well, it's, it's not very helpful at this point in time, right? It's, it doesn't identify that it's code, it's not syntax highlighted, it's not capturing where it came from or any of those things. So we started out with that same copy and paste in the desktop app, right? So here I am inside of pieces. And this is where machine learning, especially on device machine learning goes a really long way. So right away, I pasted that same bit of code with a, a control or command V. And you can see it said, hey, this is not actually just text. This is actually code, right? So it's using on-device classification algorithms and machine learning to say, what type of material is this? Text, code, what language of code is this? So you can see we tried to classify it, very confident that it's Dart. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do a, a series of things that, that are the things that you, you necessarily don't want to take the time to do, especially when you're moving really quick. You want to just fire and forget, right? And so we're going to give it a, a really nice title here. This is using a transformer model that runs on device. And if you flip it over to the, the context view, you'll actually see some of the other things that we did. So we're going to give it some annotations about what this code does. And of course, you can add more. You can generate other different types of annotations. We're going to associate some suggested searches that will uh, kind of show up in an autocomplete format when you go to find this thing later. We're going to give this thing some tags. And we're actually going to go ahead and, and look out to the web and associate um, external documentation links that are highly relevant to this material, right, to this code snippet. And so all of that is actually powered completely on device using machine learning, right? So we saw, you know, Apple shipping these M series. We see the, the TPUs, the MPUs, uh, all the work that Qualcomm and, and the others are doing. We said there's a blended world kind of uh, approaching us rapidly, right? The harmony between on device machine learning and cloud machine learning, right, and cloud AI. So that's just the simple copy and paste into pieces. 
Um, but in addition to saving those things, right? And of course, like over time, you're going to build up a, a large repository of materials that you've saved in all their captured context. We also have those generative workflows, right? So you have these co-pilot chats, and we've seen a lot of these in the market um, using all different types of large language models. And so you can think about this as like a, a operating system level co-pilot you know, system um, that is able to be powered by all different types of large language models. Large language models in the cloud, of course, you can you know, bring your own API key or use one of ours. Um, you can use the Gemini models, the Palm 2 models, but also for environments that are kind of, you know, have high security implications, high privacy implications, you can run pieces in a completely air-gapped regard, right? And so you can use on-device models like Mistral or uh, the Phi 2 models from Microsoft. We have Gemma coming out and so on. So this means that you get to have conversational um, kind of exchanges with your co-pilot grounded in your work stream uh, kind of context, right? So everything that I was doing across the browser, the IDE, and inside of those collaborative environments is used to background uh, uh, background kind of contextualize this, this co-pilot chat. So of course you can come in, I'll show you some of the chats that I've been having, right? Going back and forth with FFI bindings between Windows and Dart. And I'm going, uh, you know, I'm going through this iterative process where, you know, the first time, the second time, maybe even the third time, I'm not getting what I want until I finally have something that's that's usable. And maybe I want to save this to pieces. And then I want to jump over and I actually want to use this in some type of implementation, right? So here's the, the large mono repo that I'm working inside of. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll pull up this example. You can see I've got all my bindings inside of Windows here, my documentation, et cetera. So from that research and, and kind of problem solving process in the browser, I want to be able to fire and forget all of these, you know, kind of snippets and links and, and small bits of information that summate to a final implementation uh, for my code base. And so pieces is that home to not only save, but then a step further, generate, iterate, and curate using co-pilots that kind of match your, your privacy and security needs. So that's kind of the generative process that complements the saving, right? Um, and then, of course, like you know, uh, once you save a bunch of things, you're going to want to be able to search them. I won't get into this too much, but there's some really great search functionality inside of pieces. You can imagine this as kind of an offline Google for all of your things uh, where related people, related files, related links, all of that is captured and associated directly inside of the, the, the program. Right. Um, but I wanted to also uh, touch on before I get into the, the work stream pattern engine, which is coming out right now, this is really kind of a, an interesting topic. I wanted to touch on the temporal nature of how people work, right? And so picking up where developers left off is, is often a large challenge, right? You might face this, this cold start. And so you're like, you know, what was I referencing? What was I reusing uh, throughout a, a certain period of time, maybe eight days ago, uh, maybe last month, whatever it is. Pieces not only captures the what and also the context, like where it came from, who it's related to, et cetera, but it also captures that temporal metadata of when, right, and how it's important. And so if you take all those things and you combine them, you actually get to build some pretty world-class experiences where your co-pilot conversations understand things that uh, natural co-pilots out there in the world, like ChatGPT, they're not going to understand. And so this is where I kind of bring us to the, the next evolution of our product that's rolling out uh, this quarter. Um, and actually, I'd love to talk to some of y'all if you wanted to sign up for the beta. But this is this idea that developers oftentimes like don't remember, like they, they, they don't realize they should have saved something or they should have captured something until they realize they didn't and they need it in that moment in time. And so it's a very conscious process to kind of understand, okay, I'm gonna need this for later. Let me go ahead and save this, annotate it, document it, tag it, make it indexable so that I can have this thing when I need it or share it to another team member, right? In the in the circumstances of onboarding or, or things like that. And so pieces um, is now kind of modeled after how developers work, right? So we took all those great components that you, you, you love to do, right? It just takes a ton of time to identify what's important, to triangulate it and save it. And we've automated that using on-device machine learning and some really, really excellent vision processing. So I'll show you these, everything I demoed today is what you can do with the tool. But the real question is what can the tool do for you, right? As you go through these, these kind of natural workflow pillars and, and processes. And so I'll show you a demo here, which is pretty exciting. And this is rolling out in a, a beta group this week. And I'm sure this will kind of stir some questions. 
But the, the, the thing for us is can pieces fundamentally shadow your workflow, identify, you know, across your conversations, your tabs, your research, whatever else it is, what's important shadow save that in a kind of ephemeral sense, right? Where it's indexed and it's vectorized and it's retrievable. Um, and then use that to not only ground the copilot, but also to kind of give you what you need when you need it as a heads up display for developers. So in this demo here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how uh, this, this upcoming version of pieces is in real time kind of tracking what's going on. So we're in a machine learning team chat here and we're just kind of scrolling. You can see now we jump over to a research paper. Uh, we're taking a look at some of that, you know, definitely a lot of research goes into this pro product. Um, we have a all hands here where you can see people are, are putting up their bullets and so on. Um, and then over here on the co-pilot, it is continuously grounded in everything that you're interacting with. Granted, there's no browser uh, there's no browser integration here, so there's no hardline plugin. And uh, Sam just asked this question: You know, what were we discussing in ML Team Chat? Um, a small hiccup here, and we we send it again. This will be fixed. Uh, but it says, you know, basically based on the provided context from the ML Team Chat, uh, we were t discussing um, some stuff with Windows, specifically Dart script paths on Windows. Um, and then Sam is going to ask another question, which is, can you give me a quick uh, you know, snapshot or summary of the Quasar paper that he was uh, looking at in that X archive? So right away, it knows exactly what he had seen. It's grounding it and it's saying, you know, here's the background, here's the, the kind of major components of this and so on. So, you know, this system without having to set context manually or anything like that understands what you're doing as a developer, right? And it's grounded in code bases, it's grounded in your operating system, it's grounded in anything that you kind of allow pieces to, to have access to. And so right here, it's going ahead and, and generating a, a quite robust conversation, uh, a summary for the, the paper. And then the last thing is, uh, could you summarize the the all hands, which is hilarious, right? So you know, we have a, a decently sized team and, and if anyone on the team's not paying attention, they just let pieces uh, take a look at this thing. And of course, like sometimes the, the large language models think they don't have the context. This is a, a bug that's fixed because this demo is like, I don't know, a month and a half old now. Um, but it, obviously based on the, the Google Slides deck, it says, you know, here was the, the snapshot from the um, kind of February 7th, all hands. And it's saying, you know, we talked about onboarding, content strategy, our YouTube channel, uh, definitely go check that out, get pieces on YouTube. Um, and then, yeah, from the other all hands, you know, we talked about some, some workflow pattern engine stuff, some C++, C++ stuff, et cetera. So, you know, this is a, a type of capability that we, we think is going to be really important to make co-pilots um, not only real time, but just useful, right? Without having to put so much manual effort in to say, hey, here's the code base I'm working on. Here's, you know, all the slides that I just looked at. Like having to manually ground it is, is a laborious process in addition to going back and forth, right? So Pieces takes all of that a whole step further and it says, you know, hey, we'll do all that smart kind of grounding triangulation for you. And then you just ask the questions that you like. So uh, that's kind of the, the temporal grounding, the continuous grounding that, that you can kind of utilize inside of the pieces copilot. Um, and of course, as well, we're able to take that a step further and say, you know, when it's code specific, we'll save snippets for you. When it's uh, kind of website specific, we'll save topics and snippets and links. And so aggregating those things on your behalf, right, is, is a really, really nice thing to have, especially in the context of like, picking up where you left off or um, kind of onboarding a new team member, et cetera. So truly capturing that work in progress uh, journey is the name of the game for us. The final pillar here, and I'll go ahead and, and stop sharing my screen. The final pillar here is that uh, we firmly believe that co-pilot conversations are, um, you know, as I mentioned, laborious, right? You have to type a query, you have to make sure you're, you're, you're kind of going back and forth with it. You're asking the right questions in the right way. And this is a difficult thing to do, right? And uh, so one of the goals is, can we basically give developers a feed, a heads up display based on your current context? So if I'm on some Dart documentation or if I'm in my code base, can pieces automatically recognize that context and give me 
people to talk to, projects to reference, related files, related links, related snippets. Then when I switch context again, can it kind of refresh that feed and give me the relevant items? Now we have to do this in a, in a very fast regard, you know, roughly 400 milliseconds end to end, right? And that includes the vision processing, the large language models, the local routing agents, um, and the, the retrieval layer. And so uh, we, we actually say, you know, it's the right tool for the right job when it comes to these types of challenges, right? And so, you know, kind of utilizing a, a large language model like Claude models or GPT-4 models or things like that, that might not be the right tool for the right job. And certainly there's a lot of limitations around context windows and tokens per second and so on. Can we actually say, hey, there's a micro model for this task, right? Or there's a 2 billion parameter LLM for a summarization task or things like that, where they're energy efficient, compute efficient, can run completely on device um, and then kind of, you know, keep up with the pace of, of your work stream. So that's really a lot of the questions that, that we're seeing. And then, you know, there's this larger question that's kind of going on in the world right now, certainly stirred by the, the Devon AI stuff and things like that, which is, you know, what does the role of developers look like, you know, a couple of years from now? And I would say, you know, in our world, we're in the camp of a developer with AI will be more productive than a standalone AI system in and of itself, right? For a, a, a multitude of reasons, right? Um, and so, you know, our goal is to augment the work you do, allow you to kind of move up a level from like the deep depths of one specific code base into a more horizontal regard where you can kind of perform as a, as a Swiss army knife, right? Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, those 50 tabs, I guarantee you when I kind of, you know, submit the PR, it goes through the pull request uh, process, everyone reviews it and it, merge, it merges into main, uh, these 50 tabs will get lost in the ether, right? And that's why pieces is so excellent because it captures, you know, that, that work in progress, as I keep mentioning. Um, same with the conversations in Gchat, you know, that'll be 100,000 messages later until uh, I have to circle back to it, right? And maybe there's a framework upgrade or we have to refactor or we're onboarding someone and we have to go and figure out how did we actually implement this, right? Like what were the documentation sites that we visited? What were the, the nuances? What were the people that we talked to? You know, how do we come to that end result? Um, and that's the goal of pieces, right? Is to not only be a place for you know, humans to save something, but also a place for it to save on your behalf, right? Um, and then to give you what you need when you need it or make things uh, searchable and retrievable um, from, from you as a human trying to go in, and find something. And, you know, we, we deeply believe that, you know, these systems, th there are a large amount of constraints when it comes to AI uh, in, the, in the domain of, of code and, and developer workflows, right? And so you have environments like the DOD environment. Um, so that's in the United States Department of Defense. Uh, you have banking environments, you have high security environments where these developers, you know, can can deeply leverage AI just like the rest of us in open source or working at a, a large company. But you have to have the proper kind of setup where you know not everything is getting piped to the cloud, right? You know, and so we 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 have put a large amount of effort into on-device machine learning um, that allows it to not only be performant and cost-effective and things like that, but also be completely air gapped, right? Um, and so that's kind of the name of the game for us. That's what we're building at Pieces. Um, we think that there's going to be a good amount of tools that that crop up, um, you know, in this realm. But you know, that in short is is some of the cool stuff we're doing. Very very cool. Uh, yeah, it, it got got my brain sparking, and, and I've got a couple of <laughs> questions. From I, I think maybe one short question, and, and yeah. we're over time. But I wanted to um, like one thing that's been fascinating me is uh, how can we how can we get to this composite AI where some processing happens on local devices um, and where you actually know what's being sent out to the cloud and, and, and where you can choose um, who is processing what. Is, is that actually what you're doing or? That, that, is, that is a bit of what we're doing here. Um, I'll share one thing just to kind of like okay. show you this. Very short. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let me, let me switch away from the, the tab so we don't get the infinite windows. But if you come into pieces here, and, and I won't do this for this demo because I would obviously lose the stream, but uh, for a lot of demos that we do in these high constraint environments, like mm -hmm. we'll just turn the Wi-Fi off and we'll do the entire demo uh, nice. offline. But I'll pop over to the settings and you can actually check this out in um, the context enrichment. Um, and then it's this processing mode here, right? So I'm on blended processing, but I can actually switch to completely on device local mode. Mm -hmm. 
And then everything that you, you kind of saw earlier, like if I jump over here and I, I grab some of this, um, let me go ahead and grab that, Command C, and I just paste this into pieces. I'll jump over to the, the gallery view for a larger uh, kind of layout here. You'll see that it's doing this, this background enrichment. It already did the classification. It already did the, the language stuff. Um, it's going to be generating a title here using a, a local transformer and a local mm -hmm. large language model. It's got those related links. It's got those annotations, suggested mm -hmm. searches, Thanks. tags, et cetera. So you can understand like on-device machine learning is actually a very powerful element that should be utilized, right? Yeah. It's fast. It's effective. Uh, it certainly, you know, uh, you know, plays into these large chips that are that are deeply integrated with, you know, advanced matrix multiplication firmware and, and all the likes. Um, but then you do have the the need for larger models that run asynchronously or or you know have larger context windows. Uh, but it's the right tool for the right job. So I think there's a harmony that that is to be met for sure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, it was really, yeah. really exciting to see like a, a practical example that yeah. uh, mixes the two already. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Check it out. Pieces.app. Yeah. It's uh, it's free to use. It's early. You know, we're we're uh, we're 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 a Series A company. We just raised our Series A round, so a whole lot more to come for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Saul. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks. much, Christoph.